The Guildhouse Collections Project is a collaborative partnership between key institutions and Guildhouse, and it invites artists to go into a museum and to unpack a collection, explore the works, and further their own research within their practice. So we're now in the sixth iteration of the Collections Project with FUMA, and this iteration is really different because we're inviting three artists rather than one to respond to the collection, and that will allow them to research in a collaborative manner for them to give critical conversations to each other and feedback to each other, as well as working really closely with the curator and the collection itself, each making very independent bodies of artwork for the exhibition. The artists for this year's Guildhouse Collections project at FUMA have been mainly looking at this European print collection that was amassed by Robert Smith, and it was his innovative decision to purchase European prints to use as supplements to the visual arts process. So in a sense, the Guildhouse Collections project at FUMA with these prints has come full circle. Again, they're being used by artists for, not only for teaching and learning, but to propel their own practice. FUMA collections are living collections, so not only are the collections being interpreted by the academic community through teaching and learning, they are also growing and changing. But it's really important for FUMA to be a site for artistic production and exchange, and we're really thrilled that artists can not only contribute to the research around the European print collection, but can make new work in response to it. For me, After the Fall can relate to kind of specific crises in human history, whether that is war, whether that is famine, whether that is the climate crisis. I guess I was interested in what happens after that point of crisis and how artists have responded to the theme of the fall throughout history from Renaissance to contemporary times. In this exhibition, I'm exhibiting two works. So one is a video work that resulted from a very extended stay up at Marion Valley, which is a Catholic site of pilgrimage on the Gold Coast. And I'm also exhibiting a sculptural work. I became interested in the Karachi print, which is our Lady of Mercy protecting two members of a confraternity because the two members of the confraternity were looking up. I think it speaks to the hierarchy of space as it's understood, particularly within kind of Christian belief systems. I then felt like I wanted to incorporate the act of looking up through my examination of the spaces, looking at how that was architecturally designed to encourage the act of looking up. I recreated the coat of Mary in the Karachi print in COVID gowns, which came from my very brief period, COVID testing during the pandemic. I was really drawn to this sense of motherly protection in the gesture of Our Lady of Mercy, who is often depicted sheltering people under her very large cloak. I ended up researching all the different names for Mary that I could possibly find, and I've embroidered them onto the gown. My aim was to do it kind of as quickly as possible and to kind of describe it almost as a form of writing. Well, the Nuremberg Chronicle, printed in 1493, it's a book that has 1,800 illustrations, the most lavishly illustrated book of its time. I think immediately I was drawn to it for aesthetic reasons. Something about the form and the function of it kind of coming together, I guess, really interested me. There are 600 kind of separate woodcuts, yet 1,800 illustrations. So they kind of mixed and matched a bit. So some of the, the popes or the saints or the cities in there have kind of similar elements, which I think is fantastic. So there's, it's kind of efficient, and diagrammatic in a way. There's a series of what's often referred to as monstrosities. There's 21 small scale images in the Chronicle. And they're images of humans with various um, oddities, I guess you could say, almost superpowers in some ways as well. The blemies is a new word that I learned. I didn't realise it was called the blemies, but a figure that has no head, but has his face on his chest. There are figures with excess fingers and excess hands or horns and cloven feet. They're amazing little images, they seem to me, to be represented with great compassion. 
for this project, I got really engaged, I suppose, with the prints and marvelled at the skill, the fineness, the and a commitment to the line <laughs> in a way. And so what I've done, I've made a series of dry points that in many of them, there's a direct reproduction of an aspect of the figure that's then included. So the figure becomes a bit more isolated, but kind of playing around with elements of that, I guess, hybrid, that chimera kind of figure, that fantastical aspect in the Chronicle. They're almost kind of like cartoons, 20th century cartoons. They are drawn with great efficiency. They're very minimal. There's a dark black outline. It's just the basic information that needs to be there. So kind of thinking about what is actually in front of me with that imagery and how I can kind of translate it into now. When I saw the, uh, the call out for the After the Fall project, I was already thinking and working about what had happened in Afghanistan just a few months before in August 2021, where um, um, the whole country um, unfortunately given to, to, to the Taliban. Then based on the conversations with FEMA um, staff and, and also the information, uh, I realized one of the artists that FEMA has prints from are uh, Katkowitz and Goya. These artists really lived what they paint. You really feel that grief is like really there and, and it's communicated to audience. For the After the Fall project, I created a body of paintings and one uh, video sound work, which called Tamam. The word Tamam is a, is a very beautiful uh, Farsi word. If I translate it literally, it means um, finished or, 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 or the end. It's like the end of the end. Everything is completely finished. The video is based on uh, footage which I gathered in the first days of Taliban uh, taking over the country, especially some footage which uh, people took from the Kabul airport during the first night and the second day. It's just like so horrific, it's like so unearthly. It also links with some of the works um, that at the FUMA uh, collection, including one work which is a print of um, this uh, group of soldiers uh, marching. And when I looked at that work, I kind of felt that I can hearing the noise that they make when, when, when march. My process is quite simple at the same time complicated. So um, if I think of a topic, it also comes to my dreams. And I remember in one of the sessions, I borrowed a, a book about the Catacolwitz. And a few days after I had this dream, which was um, quite dark at the same time, um, really vivid. In this painting, it's based on this dream where I saw giant um, black deer struggling, trying to stay alive, trying to survive this massive flood. And I felt like this deer is like a symbol of all, all my loved ones. And on the other side, I saw my family members floating on a very uh, thin branch of a tree. That tree is like also symbolize a very distant hope. And I feel there's a strong connection with, um, especially with, with, with Goya and, and Katakowicz.